So as everybody here probably is aware and those watching are aware, as a community, we work to quantify the lived experience of rare disease and we published those results in 2022. And what we found was that in 2019, the economic impact of living with a rare disease was close to a trillion dollars. But what had happened at that time is we were just scratching the surface. That was just the tip of the iceberg. What we had quantified was the lived experience of 379 diseases of the 10,000 rare diseases and reflected an estimated 15 million Americans, not 30 million Americans who are estimated to be living with rare diseases. And we knew that that was a super conservative estimate. So what we wanted to do was begin to look beyond the surface and start to look under that iceberg. What else was there to learn? What else could we quantify in the rare disease experience? So what we started to think about was the diagnostic odyssey in rare disease. Because one of the things that was required to participate in that survey that helped inform that study was that you had to have a confirmed diagnosis of a rare disease that had an ICD code. And for many of us, we know that that is a significant hurdle in our rare disease community. But we had had the insight and foresight to collect some data within that study around those participating in that survey. And we had worked with the Undiagnosed Diseases Network out of NIH to help collect that data within the survey. So I want to talk about what the Diagnostic Odyssey is, and we have some folks here who are going to really help bring that to light for us here today. But to define that so you understand what we're talking about here today, the Diagnostic Odyssey is a term that we use very casually here in the rare disease community, but it is not a casual term. And it talks about the time point between those first symptoms that first take you to a medical provider to seek out help and understanding for what might be happening in your life, your loved one's life, your child's life, that time point to the time point where you have a confirmed diagnosis that helps lead you to appropriate medical care and appropriate intervention. And it helps encapsulate everything that happens in between. And there is so much. And while this image seems like a pretty straightforward path with hospitalizations and ER visits and diagnostics, it oftentimes for many people is untenable, really looks more like the game board from Shoots and Ladders, and sometimes is unending. But for us in this study, the first study that we conducted, we actually had some data for those who had participated in the study. And what we knew was that for those who had participated in the first study, for the first time we had some data around the mean diagnostic odyssey in the rare disease community was over six years for those with a confirmed diagnosis with an ICD code and included more than 17 providers. So we wanted to dig deeper and start to understand what that could mean. We also had an understanding of who those providers were, what those interventions included, how many of those were out-of-state visits. And many of us also understand that that comes with a lot of insurance privilege to be able to go out of state to seek medical care and a provider, to be able to be reimbursed for that care, to be able to have your caregiving costs covered while you go with the child or the loved one and seek those insights. So we wanted to understand what some of those costs might be. So that's what brought us to this study. So here's what we know about the Diagnostic Odyssey before we began. We know that the Diagnostic Odyssey results in delayed and misdiagnoses. We know that delays in an accurate diagnosis can and does yield inappropriate clinical management, unnecessary medical interventions, and missed treatment windows for therapeutic interventions to optimize health outcomes or prevent disease symptom onset. Oftentimes, approved therapies are sitting on the shelves and patients who will benefit from them are not identified or are not identified in time to benefit from them. Ultimately, a diagnostic odyssey puts patients at risk for preventable death and disability. But we also know that we have the technology to do better. We know that advancements in technologies to screen, 
diagnose, treat, and manage rare disease have the potential to dramatically shorten and even eliminate the diagnostic odyssey in rare disease. But we know that one of the primary barriers to this implementation is often resources and cost. So that's why we did this study, to understand, well, what are the costs involved in the diagnostic odyssey? And could we begin to work on policy that would eliminate those costs so that we could look at investing in eliminating the diagnostic odyssey overall. So for this study, we wanted to provide an estimate of the potential cost savings that may result from shortening or eliminating the diagnostic odyssey. We wanted to understand the patient journey prior to diagnosis and then quantify those medical costs and we created a new methodology for understanding the productivity losses of a delayed diagnosis. So in short, we started to peek under the surface of that iceberg and examine just a piece, a chip of that iceberg. So we published today that report. It's on our website. You can go there for all of the methodology and all of the details. You don't have to be able to read this slide, with the exception to tell you that we included a robust data set that includes public and private data sets, so Medicaid, Medicare, and commercial data. We used the ICD codes of the diseases that we included in this study. And unlike in the first study where we were looking at a broad universe of rare diseases, we chose seven specific diseases to look at to develop a methodology and to use as case studies, if you will, so that we could extrapolate those to the broader population. And while this is Newborn Screening Awareness Month, so we're really focusing today on the pediatric diseases that we included in this study, we are not only interested in solving the diagnostic odyssey for pediatric disease. So of the disorders that we included, we had seven diseases. The five highlighted in red here are the pediatric onset diseases or traditionally pediatric onset diseases. We had two traditionally adult or later onset diseases. And the three that are bolded are those for which there are already um, federal recommendations to the federal newborn screening panel so that we could look at the impact of newborn screening versus the cost that would be incurred without newborn screening in those diseases. In order to do this, we created very detailed patient journey maps. So we worked with an expert advisory committee who guided the overall study. And then for each of these seven diseases, we had a another deeper layer of experts in each of those diseases who helped us understand what the patient journey would be for an ideal timely diagnosis versus what the patient journey looks like in the typical clinically presenting diagnosis. Again, that guided this study. And we thank everybody who was involved in this study. We utilized and relied on those groups heavily throughout the time period. As I mentioned, there was also a formula developed for calculating productivity losses. I will say the term I use for this is it is grossly conservative. It was really important to our health economic team that this be anchored to validated methodology that had already been published, but this in no way actually reflects what happens in a rare disease journey. And so we put that caveat all over all of this, but as with all of the data that we push out, we want it to be bulletproof and we want it to be defensible. But we understand that in rare disease, your providers are not across the street that these visits are not usually half a day or a quarter of a day, but this data is the start for us as a community. So this is where we are, and I'm getting the flag, so I'm gonna wrap this up, but we do have infographics for everybody, and I'm gonna show you just a sneak peek of where we are. This is an overview of the cost of the diagnostic odyssey for the pediatric diseases. What you have on the left is the cost of the diagnostic odyssey, the timely, diagnostic odyssey, the mean age of diagnosis for each disease. So it is specific to each disease. And then on right hand side is what the mean age of diagnosis and what the cost of that diagnostic odyssey would be in a delayed diagnosis. Again, specific to each disease. So when you look at this and you orient yourself, you compare sort of color of the bar to the color of the bar and look at that difference. If you had a timely diagnosis versus a delayed diagnosis, what that cost difference would be. These are avoidable costs. These are not necessary costs if we were to implement the tools, resources, and technology we have to have timely diagnoses in these diseases. 
Looking at this another way, if we look at the three conditions for which we have newborn screening available, this is the comparison of those costs for ALD, Pompeii, and SCID, and we've representatives from two of those communities here today. These are the avoidable costs in the diagnostic odyssey for ALD, Pompeii, and SCID. Out-of-state trips related to rare disease diagnosis. Again, a very conservative estimate. On the left-hand side, this shows for children, so if you're seeking a diagnosis for a child, the mean number of out-of-state trips based on the length of the diagnostic odyssey. So if your odyssey is between two and four years, the number of out-of-state trips was just over four. If your diagnostic odyssey was more than five years, there were more than five out-of-state trips to seek a confirmed diagnosis. On the right-hand side, that was, you see the data for adults. Again, this is only if you can actually seek out-of-state care. If you can afford to do that on your own, if you have insurance that will reimburse you for that. If you don't, your diagnostic odyssey would be much longer. So there are infographics available on our website. Those of you in the room have these. What we have done is we have taken all of these data and we have pulled them down for each of the diseases in the report. For th two of the diseases, we've put them together as infographics and then we have a combined infographic. What you'll see, just to orient you to this, is what we've done is shown on the right-hand side for a timely diagnosis, the number of interventions as they expand out from the center in a timely diagnosis versus a delayed diagnosis. With a timely diagnosis, the visits to specialists, the number of testing procedures, the number of treatments and supporting therapies, and the number of events are going up with a delayed diagnosis versus a timely diagnosis. When you have a timely diagnosis in both Duchenne and Pompeii, with the two infographics that we have here, none of these are needed during the pre-diagnosis period. We also have the aggregate costs for all of these visits. And then I'll just show the combined, and I'll end on this. What we have shown is that the avoidable costs across the seven diseases range from $86,000 a year to $517,000 a year. These are the avoidable costs of the diagnostic odyssey per patient. Study limitations, of course, we were limited by ICD codes. The majority of rare diseases do not have an end to the diagnostic odyssey, which my friend Sarah will talk about today, so the cost would be much greater. And the productivity loss methodology was super conservative, so the cost would actually be much greater. I want to thank everybody who made this study possible. It would not be possible without our extraordinary community and all of the experts who made this work possible. And we call on all of you here today and around the globe to help us implement this and implement these solutions. Thank you.